by Sega. Hey, what's up, player? This is Catch22, and welcome to the Sega Holic. This is part two for my PC Engine audio video guide, in which I'm going to be prototyping an RGB amplifier. First things first, you can buy external RGB solutions like this one on eBay for cheap, only $23. I decided to try to make my own external RGB solution about a year and a half ago because these type of units used to be much more expensive and this particular unit was not available. One that was available at the time was this one by DB Electronics, but like I said, $63 was a bit expensive. And lastly, you can opt to use pre-built solutions intended for internal use as an external solution, but sourcing and building your own is going to be cheaper and most importantly educational. The knowledge gained by building your own RGB amplifier for the PC Engine will also transfer to other consoles as well. Research led me to GameSX which is a great resource for game console technical information. Here is a schematic for separate red, green, blue, and sync signal amplifiers, as well as simple noise filters for the audio signals. This schematic calls for the use of slightly bulky transistors. There is a more elegant solution, the use of an IC amplifier. So what's an IC? Well, you can read Wikipedia, but basically an IC is short for integrated circuit, meaning whole specialized circuits are fit into a package. Here's an SOIC packaged amplifier a Texas Instruments THS7316, which along with the related THS7314 was chosen for its performance as well as its price. The 7314 is a three channel SDTV amp with filters and a 6 dB gain. A 6 dB gain for voltage means a doubling of voltage for the input signal. Further, the 7314 has an 8.5 megahertz anti aliasing filter. Essentially, the 7316 has the same specs as the 7314, except for the higher 36 MHz filter for HDTV applications. The only downside is that both of these chips are only 3 channel amplifiers, as our application needs 4 channels for RGB as well as sync. Searching TI's website for their THS7300 line, we find various 4 channel amps that would suit our needs. The THS7376 features 1 SD and 3 HD filters, which can also be bypassed, but the disadvantage is its TSSOP package size. From this picture, we can compare various sizes for IC packages. The top center PCB is a TSSOP to dip adapter. Because of its size, you can see the difficulty of soldering a TSSOP chip's legs without bridging them. To the right of it is the back side of the same adapter, which is an SOIP to dip adapter. The top left is a THS7316 that has already been soldered to a dip adapter. A dip adapter is needed because most bread and prototype boards have holes that are spaced for dip IC packages. The bottom left is a dip sized 555 timer IC and you can see it's bigger than a TSSOP or an SOIC package would be. Finally on the bottom right is a transistor that would have been used in the original schematic. Essentially the THS7316 contains three of these equivalent transistors along with some additional resistors. Both the 7314 and the 7316 has three recommended input modes, DC, AC sync tip clamp, and AC bias. Output modes are DC coupled and AC coupled. Also, make sure to read and reference the data sheet on each chip. After trying various combinations of TI's recommended inputs and outputs, I settled on this design, AC biased inputs and DC coupled outputs. Here's TI schematic for an AC biased input. Note that the pull up resistor's value changes to 5.01 mega ohm with a 5 volt power supply. So, reading the AC bias input mode section of the datasheet, it says sync tip clamps work great for signals that have H and or V sig 
signals associated with them. But some video signals do not have a sync embedded within the signal. If AC coupling of these signals is desired, then a DC bias is required to properly set the DC operating point. So basically what the datasheet is telling us is that if the video signal does not have a horizontal or vertical sync embedded within the signal, then use AC bias input mode. I did check the RGB lines on the PC engine for sync and it's not on any of them. By the way, some examples of sync being embedded on video lines are on a PS2 which has sync on green, also Luma for S-Video and also CVBS or composite video. Now reading further, it says this function is accomplished with the THS7314 by adding an external pull-up resistor to the positive power supply as shown on figure 32. Now it says here, if the output DC bias point is desired to be 0.68 volts with a 5 volt power supply, then the pull-up resistor calculates to about 5.1 mega ohm. Now it says here, lastly, the input capacitor forms a high pass filter with the parallel impedance of the pull-up resistor and the six, excuse me, 800 kilo ohm resistor. Here's a look at the internals of the 7314 with the 800 kilo ohm resistor that the data sheet was talking about. Moving on, it says, it's good to have the high pass filter about 3 hertz to minimize any potential droop on a progressive blue or progressive red or non-sync blue or red signal. A 0.1 microfarad input capacitor with a 3.01 mega ohm pull up resistor equates to about a 2.5 hertz high pass corner frequency. Since I am using a 5.01 mega ohm pull up resistor instead, we need to find the parallel impedance of the pull-up resistor and that 800 kilo ohm internal resistor. And to get that value, we go to this special website where we input the number of resistors, which is two, and our first resistor, which is the 800 kilo ohm internal resistor, and our second resistor, which is the 5.01 mega ohm pull-up resistor. So we copy and paste that value and then go to another special website which calculates the high pass frequency for those given values. So we copy and paste that there and put in our desired frequency which is 3 hertz and we get our value of about 77 nanofarads or 0.07 microfarads. Now checking Mauser for the closest uh, 0.077 microfarad capacitor we find that uh, the 0.1 micro is the closest to that because the next lowest one would be a 0.022 micro, which would be uh, again further than what the 0.1 would be. So going back to that other website again, we put in our values and we are forced to use our 0.1 microfarad capacitor. So we get a 2.3 Hertz frequency. So that's pretty close to the 2.5 Hertz or the 3 Hertz that the data sheet suggested. Now what kind of a difference the 0.7 Hertz difference would make? Your guess is as good as mine. So yeah, that pretty much explains why these capacitors need to be 0.1 microfarad. And here TI basically tells you to use AC biased inputs. It says this mode of operation is recommended for use with Chroma C which is the uh, non-sync signal for S-Video, progressive blue and progressive red, U and V for YUV, and non-sync B and or R signals. As far as output mode of operation goes, I chose DC coupled because it only requires a 75 ohm resistor at the output terminals. TI states the THS7314 incorporates a rail-to-rail -rail output stage that can be used to drive the line directly without the need for large AC coupling capacitors shown in figure 33. This offers the best line tilt and field tilt or droop performance since there is no AC coupling occurring. Basically this is saying that no further distortion occurs when DC coupling the outputs. Here's a great resource from Maxim Integrated who also designs video ICs. This page shows what field tilt and droop looks like on an O-scope. 
notice that both the input and output are AC coupled. And also notice how the input signal has distorted at the output. Now here is a schematic of an amplifier with an AC biased input and a DC coupled output. Here you can see that the input and output signals look basically the same. Obviously this means minimal distortion. For C-Sync, we're going to be using a THS7316 because that's what I have on hand. And for the inputs, I'm going to be using a C-Sync tip clamp and the output would be a DC coupled output. I'm using this modes because, well, as was detailed earlier, these are our best options. As you see here, TI recommends a 0.1 microfarad capacitor at the input, though if you scroll further down, it actually recommends that you use a 0.047 microfarad capacitor instead to increase the hum rejection factor. If you don't have a 0.47 microfarad on hand, you can wire two 0.1 microfarad capacitors in series and it'll give you 0.05 microfarads. And finally, here are both circuits built on this breadboard and I gotta say I'm quite pleased with the results. I was gonna add the Framemeister um, game capture videos that compares um, the 7314 and the 7316 um, to the end of this video but I mindlessly made this video 30 frames per second while the um, captured um, game footage is 60 frames. Obviously the uh, captured game footage running at 60 frames per second will look uh, much better. Um, so I'm gonna have to make a part two of this part two. I will also have comparison videos of um, the game running with different uh, versions of sync, such as comparing composite video and C-Sync for sync, and also having them uh, either amplified or not and if that makes a difference. So yeah the footage has all been captured so the uh, next video should be out uh, within the next couple days. Promise. And lastly um, I encourage you guys to leave comments in the comments section um, if you have anything on your mind or you know you have any type of uh, advice for me um yeah just leave it in the comment section and uh i'll see you guys next time man aloha